Today we are talking about what a Foley catheter is, what it is, how it gets put in, why you might need one when you're in labor. Let's talk about it. I'm Hillary, I am the pregnancy nurse, and I am the curly head behind the website Pulling Curls. I am also the creator of the online prenatal class for couples. I have been a nurse since 1997, and I have 20 years of labor and delivery experience. I am here to prepare you from bump to bassinet for the confident collaborative hospital birth that you are looking for. Today we are talking about Foley catheters. Everybody's favorite, right? That's why I have the lights yellow behind me. Um, so a Foley catheter is a tube that we put up into your bladder to drain urine out. Now, at the hospital, every single tube we use is called a catheter. So it can be confusing when we say the IV catheter or the epidural catheter. It really just means a tube in the hospital, even though to most lay people, a catheter means one that goes up and drains the urine out of your bladder. Fun, right? Now, some hospitals put that tube up and it stays in until you have your baby or you start to push. Usually I took it out when people started to push. Some hospitals, however, just put it up every one to two hours, drain out the urine and then take it out. It really depends on your hospital, although I'm finding that most hospitals are leaning towards putting the one in that just stays in so that your urethra is not having to undergo that trauma of it constantly having to go up. Now, I know you're like, oh my gosh, how does this all work? Don't worry, we have a full like review of how it works. I even bought a catheter, printed out a picture of female catheter insertion area. So we're gonna go through it all together. Okay, so when would you need a catheter? Most often a catheter is used when you have an epidural because two reasons. One, you will not be able to get up to the restroom. I know you've all heard of these walking epidurals. Usually those might be to a commode. They are very rare. I've only heard of a few nurses who've even seen them. So most often you just aren't getting out of your bed once you have an epidural. Good news about that is it's a great time to rest. Bad news is you do need to have a catheter because if your bladder was to fill up, it would get in the way of the baby exit area. And we don't want anything in the way of the baby exit area. We want it nice and wide open. So that's why we need to make sure to use a catheter. Also, if after you have your baby, your bladder fills up, it can make it so you really need to pee. So a lot of people might need to have a quick catheterization after baby to get that bladder out of the way so the uterus can cramp back down so that you don't end up bleeding too much. Another time that it's used is when people are on magnesium. For a couple of reasons, again, you don't feel so great when you're on magnesium. Usually you're on magnesium for either you are in preterm labor or if you have high blood pressure. So usually you don't feel so good, especially at the beginning, we give you a lot in a quick period of time. We need to monitor how your kidneys are working and making sure that you are putting out urine and it's just hard for you to get up to the restroom, at least at the beginning. Now I have had patients who didn't want the catheter and we made all the attempts to put a commode by them so they would only have to get up and use the commode. Also, if people need to do the number two, we usually try and get them up to the restroom even when they're on magnesium. So it is possible. Um, just in the beginning, it's really difficult and we really need to monitor your kidneys to make sure that you're putting out your fluids like you should because that can be a bad side effect of magnesium. But that is pretty rare. Not a lot of people get magnesium early in pregnancy, so just something to think about. As a note, some people are like, well, I want an epidural, but I wanna refuse the catheter. And honestly, I've never had a patient do that, so I don't know what the consequence would be, but I think they might refuse the epidural or they would just turn it off because it is so important that your bladder gets emptied and stays out of the way of the baby. That would be like doing harm to you. We could try trying to put you on a bedpan, but the problem is you don't really have the strength to lift your hips. Nurses really shouldn't be called on to try and lift you in that way. And so that's why we use the catheter. So if you're planning on an epidural, you need to probably plan on a catheter or talk with your provider about other alternatives that are available at your hospital. Honestly, because we put the catheter in once you're already numb, most people just enjoy the fact that they don't have to get up to the restroom. In fact, when I was pregnant with my last baby and I would be putting catheters in people while I was pregnant, I would be a little bit jealous because I worked PM shift, which means after I got off, I went right home and went to sleep. And by went to sleep, I mean that I got up and peed 4,000 times during the night. So I was kind of like a catheter would be kind of handy at this point. Okay, so now let's dive into how a catheter is placed with a real life catheter and a real fake catheter placement area. 
Okay guys, I am here in my kitchen with my cardstock genitalia so that we can put this catheter in. I actually grabbed a whole catheter kit at walmart.com. Um, I opened it just to make sure what it looked like, but we are gonna do the whole process beginning to end. And I think I failed to mention that a lot of times people get a catheter before a C-section. So that's a time that people get it put in, but of course we make sure that you are numb before we put it in or they should be making sure you're numb. And if they're not, then um, you could always ask them to make sure that you're numb before you they put it in. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so this is a catheter kit. It's actually the same one that we used in the hospital. It of course comes sealed. They're gonna take it out of its container. And then it's bunched up like this. So this is all covered in paper. That, be that is because everything inside here is considered sterile. So the nurse can touch the outside of it, but they can't touch the things on the inside until she has her sterile gloves on. They we learn a very special technique in how to do this in nursing school. We're gonna place this right between your legs. We're gonna open up the sides, okay? And then it comes like this. This part is not sterile because we're gonna use that to go right on your lady parts later. This is the sterile gloves. We're gonna open up those, put them on. Nurses learned a very special way to open up sterile gloves and put them on. Um, and this is the same if it's a man, if it's a woman. I actually had a job where I changed old men's catheters for a while, so this is all the same as that, okay? And as you can tell, I'm only using sterile hands to touch the outside of the glove. Then we're gonna use this um, to co like cover between the tray and their lady parts, all right? Inside here, we've got some iodine. I'm not gonna actually be using this today because I don't wanna turn my cardstock all mushy, but we put the iodine on these cotton swabs and you'll see me use the cotton swabs coming up. Um, this is sterile water. You're gonna see how I use that. We also have a urine collection container in here in case we need to get a urine specimen. This is jelly that we would, I'm not gonna squirt it out today, but we would squirt it all in here, discard this. So I'm just gonna so pretend like I squirted it here. And then we're gonna open up this tray. Remember the inside of this is all sterile. So that's okay for the nurse to be looking at. Okay, then we get our catheter out of its tube. Some places they encourage you to check the catheter before you put it in. So they just uncut that. Some places tell you not to blow up the catheter, but I just wanna show you guys from the other side that it just blows up like a little balloon right there, okay? And I'll show you how that works um, once we're putting it in. But I need to empty that before we get started. And that's just sterile water inside of there. Okay, so this is the catheter placement process that you guys will feel. Okay, so the nurse is gonna take her hand, she's gonna open up your labia, then she's gonna take the cotton that has got some iodine on it, so if you are feeling things, this may feel cold, she's gonna clean that area several times with each of the cotton swabs. She's gonna have the tube sitting in KY jelly, so it's all lubed up but still sterile. She's gonna stick it in your urethra, and I'm trying to do this so you guys can still see it. And your urethra takes it a little bit better than this. And it's all lubed up and all those kind of things. Okay. Once it is in, it is actually going to drain urine. The nurse is going to see that come down the tubing and into the little bag that we have here on the end. That lets the nurse know that she's in the right spot. At that point, she can take the sterile water. As a reminder, you have three holes down here. This is your pee hole where the catheter comes out. This is the baby etchlet area, that's your vagina, and this is your rectum. Obviously the pee hole is called your urethra. So three different holes. A lot of people worry that if the catheter is in there with that balloon blown up, that they won't be able to have the baby, but yep, it's separate holes. So once the catheter's in, the nurse is going to blow up the saline balloon, and that is actually what's going to hold it inside your bladder, because if you were to pull on it, it, you know, will keep it inside there. It actually blows up pretty big, so there it is. And then before delivery, your nurse will come with another syringe and just pull all that water out. You can also just cut the tube and it will let all the water drain out as well. So then when all the saline is gone, then the nurse 
can just pull out the catheter. Boom. Okay, after the catheter is in, oh, let me put it back in. <laughs> they are actually gonna tape it to your leg because we don't really want that balloon pulling on your bladder. So um, expect that to happen. Sometimes they use tape. Most often they have like a medical device that hooks it to your leg called a stat lock. Then that bag just gets full of urine and hangs on the side of your bed. Your nurse can empty it through this little guy. Um, and that's really important with um, magnesium administration because we have to empty that every hour just to make sure that your bladder is, or your kidneys are working. Okay, so that's how we put a catheter in. I hope that was really helpful for you guys. If you are nervous about it, just ask for more communication. Ask them to tell you before they touch you. Ask them to tell you before they put the cold soap on. All those different kinds of things. In reality, if you have an epidural, I always tried to wait about 30 minutes after the epidural placement so that you were nice and numb before we put the catheter in so you really aren't gonna feel a lot of that. Now, if you have to have a catheter for other reasons, like I said, just be really clear that you would like as much communication as possible. You might be thinking that every single patient wants that type of communication, but a lot of people don't want us to talk about it at all. They just want it to be put in. So the more communication you can give us about what you would like during the placement, the better. Okay, that's Fully Catheters. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and share it. Um, I love these kind of videos, but they don't seem to be very popular, even though everyone wants to know exactly how things get put in. So the, when you can, can like and share it and subscribe, it just means that YouTube shows it to more people or more people show it on your social media. You are welcome to share the link and all those different kinds of things. I'd love to get this information out to more pregnant ladies. And if you have more questions about epidurals, be sure and join me in the online prenatal class for couples where we talk about all of this and more. Um, in detail so that you can get prepared in just a few hours. So, and I do have some other videos coming up that I think you'll like as well. Mm -hmm.